Today, a well-known pastor shares with Jonathan why Christians need to stand with Israel at this critical time in history and how you can experience spiritual growth and abundant blessing as you discover the Jewish roots of your faith. Just ahead on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, proclaiming Jesus as Messiah to the world and helping you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and world events surrounding Israel. My guest today is a senior statesman in the church. He's the former pastor of Belmont Church and pastor to such notables as Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant. He's here to talk about why Christians need to interpret the scriptures literally and the dangers we face when we randomly spiritualize the Bible. He's a great lover of the Jewish people in Israel, and he devotes much of his time now to explain why this is important, important for you and for your faith. Please welcome my good friend, Pastor Don Finto. Great to have you back. Good, good. God bless. Well, welcome back to Jewish Voice. Well, thank you very much. I'm it's glad been, to be it's back. It's been a few years. It has. It has. Well, I'm very excited to get time with you. I always love to be with you. Did Don, I? you're an inspiration to all of us that are leaders in, in the Messianic Jewish movement because you represent a father in the faith that's yeah. really devoted a, a several decade, couple of decades now right. to standing in the gap for Israel and the Jewish people. How did all that come about? Because you were raised with a very different worldview. Talk about that. Oh, I was indeed. I, when Israel became a nation in 1948, I was a college student and I don't even remember. I mean, it was no big, it was nothing to me. I went to Israel in 1967, before the Six Day War. I didn't know I was where prophecy was being fulfilled. I knew none of that. But, and I was reared in a church that didn't pay attention to prophecy, didn't pay attention to the move of the Holy Spirit, all kinds of things. So, so I had to was, go through. was there any relevance to Israel and the restoration no, of Israel? No, None at nothing, all? nothing, nothing. It all, really, Jonathan, it all happened to me during the Jesus movement. I praise God for the hippie movement that turned into a Jesus movement because uh, by this time I was pastor of Belmont Church. This was June of 71. So on the tail end of the, of the Jesus movement, I got into this whole thing. And when I became pastor of Belmont, I already was involved with a lot of the hippies that had turned Jesus freaks. And some of them were Jewish and they became a part of my flock. And so I had to deal with the fact that, wait a minute, they, one of the ladies, for example, said to me, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Are we grafted into you or are you grafted into us? <laughs> and so I had to go through a whole change uh, and, and you know that we were missionaries in Germany for eight years and there was a young university student who wrote me a note one time that said, Dear Brother Finto, do you ever read the Bible to find out what it says or do you just read it to prepare a sermon? Well, I hated that card, but it really hooked me because I realized I was reading the Bible to prove what I had already been taught. So I, when this whole thing happened with the Jesus movement, then I took a whole view of rereading the prophets because I realized I was reading them, I was speed reading the prophets to get to the New Testament. I wasn't paying attention to what they were saying. I was not taking the prophets for what they were really literally saying. You, you actually went through a, 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 a shift in worldview. I did. And you talked, you, we've talked about a shift from understanding the scripture symbolically to yeah. literally. Talk about that interpreting scripture literally, which you understand to be the correct way to, I, I agree completely. Well, well, one of the things, for example, I mean, it's shocking how the church became so replacement theology that God was finished to Israel, that even some good Bibles and commentaries, I mean, there's one Bible that I have that in Isaiah 40, along in there, the, the title at the top says, God is comforting the church. Well, there's not one word about church in there. It's Israel, but we have so interpreted that. So when I so started, did you, did you did you automatically read church when you saw Israel because of yes, the way that you were brought yes, up? Yes, I did. And so Zion, Israel meant the church. Zion was the people of God, and uh, and all those terms you just because 
Israel was nondescript. Israel was not a part of the plan or anything like that. God was finished with Israel. I didn't intend to be that way. It was just what was happening in the church. I mean, the whole so church. So it was automatic. Was, it, was it was just it automatic. Was, it, without thinking, that's exactly. how you interpret it. Exactly. So what changed? Something had to change to well, open your eyes to this. One of the things, I mean, I got that card in while I was in Germany. When, I, when this whole thing happened and I was pastor at Belmont, there was a retired dentist that was teaching prophecy. And people like Pat Boone's mom and dad were in this class and, and he would have lunch with me once in a while. And he started challenging me the same way that guy had done in Germany. Hold on, reread the prophets and pay attention to what they're really saying. So when I did, I mean, this was, I began to realize, wait a minute. I realized what the Puritans began to realize about 400 or so years ago when they began to believe that Israel was going to be a nation again. That's amazing, a group that 400 years ago, a prayer movement that said Israel has to be restored back That's to right. their land. And they were amazing. considered crazy. Charles Spurgeon later, I mean, people like that began to realize that Israel had to get back into the land. I mean, and as you know, Christians were some of the main people that were involved in the reestablishment of the so, state so of Israel. So you, you had read, you were reading scripture symbolically without, without even thinking about making that transition. Exactly. And some, you began to actually interpret scripture literally, take it at face value. I began to interpret it literally. And I began to realize that also part of the problem in the whole church was that we, that we weren't really, well, all right, here's one of the ways I say it. I'd rather take Scripture literally and meet God and have Him let me know that that was, that was figurative than to take it figurative and have to meet Him and say, well, I didn't think you meant that. And He would have to say to me, what do you think I would say if I had meant that? I said it. And so there were just so many things in Scripture that I began to realize I mean, one of, the, one of the passages for me, I mean, I have these key passages that, I, that are my proof text. And one of the passages that's huge for me is Isaiah 43, 5 and 6, where God says, I'm going to bring them back from the east and the west. I'll say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't hold them back. This is the first time in history that's ever happened. I had always assumed when I read that, that it was talking about the return from Babylon. But that's not talking about the return from Babylon. Babylon was the east. It wasn't the west. It right. wasn't the north. It right. wasn't the south. So I was, I was speaking to a group of believers, a little congregation, in Messianic congregation in Haifa one time. And I said, how many of you came back, or you or your relatives came back from the east? Well, a few hands went up. I said, this is, it's talking about you. How many of you came from the west, from America or someplace like that? Two or three hands went up. How many of you are from the, from the north? Almost every yes, head of the room. Yes, of course. I said, this is you. You're the fulfillment of this scripture right here. Isaiah 43. See there? Read it in your Bible. That's it. And then how many of you are from the south? The south. Yeah. You Ethiopians there. This is you right here. This prophecy is about you. And so. Don, I think it's, it's, it's astounding when you, when you do look at it literally and you see how literally it's been fulfilled. Then it'll, it, Jeremiah comes to mind, chapter 16, where it says it will begin in the north. Yeah. And it's not North America. It's north of Israel, which is, which is clearly the former Soviet Union, which turns out to be the largest aliyah in the history, the largest right. uh, immigration of, of Jews to Israel in, in modern history. The south, you have the Ethiopian Jews, yep. it's the east and the west. It's all been fulfilled exactly as the Bible said it would be. I, I remember as a kid, somebody said to me that airplanes are in the Bible. And I thought, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. But you know what? Airplanes are in the Bible. Yeah, and, and I, I know where to, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. We've got to take a quick break. When we come back, more with Don Fento. Don't go away. Here at Jewish Voice, our mandate is to proclaim Jesus, the Messiah, to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by ministering to the physical needs of some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing to bring humanitarian aid to a remote Lost Tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe, the Lemba, 
This faithful yet forgotten people have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We urgently need the help of friends like you to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a book by Pastor Don Finto, which he recently updated and expanded. Your people shall be my people. How Israel, the Jews, and the Christian church will come together in the last days. This powerful resource explains how you can play a critical role in blessing the Jewish people and hastening the fulfillment of prophecy. With it, you'll gain a better understanding of how Israel and Jewish people are at the center of God's end times plans and how God will bless you, a member of the church, when you stand with Israel. Along with the book, you'll also receive the Jewish voice grafted in keychain. On it, you'll see the menorah, the Star of David, and the sign of the fish. It's a beautiful reminder of how Gentile believers have been grafted into Israel's olive tree to share in God's promises and blessings for the Jewish people. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $115 or more today to help some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned and this beautiful and practical custom woven Afghan throw. This specially crafted Afghan carries the scriptural reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and it will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click right now. We're back with Don Fento, who's written a new book. It's called Your People Shall Be My People, How Israel, the Jews, and the Christian Church Will Come Together in the Last Days. Before I get into the book, we were talking about airplanes. The Bible actually predicts airplanes, talks I mean, I about love airplanes. It. In Isaiah 60, Isaiah says, who are these flying along like clouds, like doves to their nests? Who are these? Not what is this, who are these? People are flying. And then there's another one that I love, and that is when the prophets were predicting the return of the Jews to the land, they even said there would be women in labor. Well, you know this, when the Yemenite Jews came back, when the Ethiopian Jews came back, we were with, I don't know if you were with, with, with Pastor uh, the last Yeah, Gerald leader. Gotson. Yes, you probably had him, but anyway, we were with him, and he was saying that when they loaded the Jewish people to bring Ethiopia, to bring them back to Israel. They counted them very meticulously. And when they got to Israel, there were two or three more than there were when they started because they'd been born in the airplanes. That's true. The prophecy yeah. is so specific sometimes. Yeah, and specifically talks about wings of eagles bringing them yes. back. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a fantastic book, Don, and um, it's completely updated and expanded now. But um, you, you really lay out in the book the contribution of Jewish people, a whole different worldview. Yeah. And your worldview changed in the Jesus movement. And you began to look at scripture literally. And it, it, it talk about it was life changing for it you, wasn't it? It was life changing. And of course, one of the, one of the scriptures that, that everybody knows it's in any kind of Jewish ministry now, but the church doesn't realize it is Genesis 12, where God promised to Abraham that he would bless those who blessed him and curse those who curse him. and. Uh, all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through him. And he renewed that to Isaac and renewed that to Jacob, who was called Israel. So there is, there is a blessing. We don't, I hope we don't only do it for that, but it's a God promise that when we get Israel in right alignment, it will bring blessings into our own lives. Yeah, I, I think Genesis 12 is a foundational it is. Uh, uh, it is. chapter and verse where it talks about, I'll make you a blessing to all the families of the earth, we believe that the ultimate blessing is that the Messiah comes through the Amen. Jewish people. In the book, you talk about a disproportionate blessing 
uh, on and through the Jewish people. You go into that in the book. I think that's fascinating. Can you talk about well, that? Well, it's amazing. I mean, you know, Nobel Prize winners. I mean, it's just shocking, this small percentage of people that the Jewish people make up in the world and what a huge percentage of Nobel Prize winners are there as compared to any other nation or any other, any other people group. And there's just in the field of music, in the field of science, in everything, the, the Jewish people have risen to the top. Which it's a direct, Jonathan, direct fulfillment of Genesis 12. Which Jonathan is a part of the problem because they rise to the top. And then people start accusing them of, of wanting to take over the world. Yeah, you talk about the, in the book, and this is very, very important, the continuation of anti-Semitism on all fronts. And, and you mentioned some specifics. Talk about that. Well, of, of course, the whole Paris thing that, that came recently, even in Nashville not all that long ago, there were swastikas painted in, or on, on one of the synagogue places there, you know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all over the world. And the news media is making it worse because they're accusing sometimes the Israelis of doing things that the Palestinians have done. There, there's, there's one newspaper article some time back where one of the New York newspapers showed a, an Israeli beating up a Palestinian. And they corrected it later because that it was actually an Israeli soldier protecting a New York Jew from the Palestinians being beaten up. But they made the correction and made it on, way on page five, right down the bottom, yeah. even Every, though it had that, been that's front happened center. several times. Uh, what, what about what about anti-Semitism in the in the church? Do you think that the church has played into oh. the hands of the enemy on this? Of course, when I first got this, I mean, you know that we were part of the Toward Jerusalem Council too, that went all over the world, going into the places where anti-Semitism decrees had been made and praying for God to reverse it. We were in the Alhambra Palace where Ferdinand and Isabel, Christian rulers, confiscated the wealth and exiled all the Jewish people. Uh, we were in, we were in all over Spain together and we went to the concentration camps together where these things had been made against the Jewish people. And it was the church that was making the decrees so often. I mean, even, as you know, I lived in Germany eight years soon following the war, Martha and I did. But it was, I mean, Germany, Austria, Poland were, quote, Christian nations. Most of them were, were christened, baptized, confirmed, Christians in a church Tom, that became I, the Nazis. I, I, I know there's people watching right now that are saying they weren't true Christians. I know that. What what they they just oh. they don't represent me. No, they don't. But, but then, there's a connection still. But then that. But, but see, we can't even use. I don't even necessarily call myself a Christian all the time, Jonathan. There are only three times in the New Covenant where that word comes up and it's somebody calling them that. It doesn't mean anything to be a Christian today. It's a follower of Yeshua. It's a follower of Jesus. That's what we want to be. You can be a Christian and be not believe anything in the Bible. You can believe a, you can be a pulpit man in a Christian church and not even believe Jesus rose from the dead. So why is it important for a follower of Jesus to embrace Israel and the Jewish people? Because they're the host people that have brought us the gospel and Paul, I mean, that, there's a whole thing here on the, the Romans 11 and all that. There's blessing coming on us. But I believe that when we get Israel in proper order, it releases world revival. Okay. Romans 11, 12 is a huge passage. We'll get to it at some point, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually have you back tomorrow. We're out of time. We've just, we've just, we, we've barely covered anything in the book. It, it's a wealth of information. We'll have Don back again tomorrow, so to be, sure, to be sure and join us. But I want to encourage you to get a copy of his new book, Your People Shall Be My People. Uh, it's filled with information that as Don's life was transformed, your life will be transformed as you get a hold of this. It really is the Bible. It's the scriptures coming alive. So your people shall be my people. You're part of this. You're not on the sidelines. You're called to be involved in the game, and this is part of the game. Well, still to come, one of the oldest surviving Jewish communities in the world. We've been working to provide medical care, dental care, eye care for them, and it's been through the help of many of you and as a result, many of them have come to know Jesus, Yeshua, 
as their Messiah and Savior. Stay with us. There's so much need in the world, sometimes it, it's just overwhelming. But God calls us to minister to one person at a time, and together we can make a difference. I prayed for a frightened mother in Zimbabwe whose baby was suffering terribly. I watched tears run down her face as our doctor provided care. I've seen a lame teenage girl drag herself down the street on her hands because God told her he had a wheelchair waiting for her. Amazingly, someone had donated funds for two new wheelchairs. We'd shipped them over with the medicines. She left wheeling herself down the street in her shiny new wheelchair, a huge smile on her face. One life changed at a time, and as a result, thousands of lives have now been transformed. But thousands more still need our help. Will you help us change lives? Will you be His voice? Will you be the one that says yes and allows God to use you to demonstrate His compassion and share His message of eternal life? I hope so. We need your help. They need your help. Be His voice. For more information, go to jewishvoice.tv or call 1-800-299-9374. Here at Jewish Voice, our mission is to share God's love by providing medical care, dental care, eye care, even eye surgeries, all completely free of charge. For the last decade, we've been working among the Beta Israel, that's the House of Israel in Ethiopia. Here's a report from our recent medical clinic outreach in Gondar, Ethiopia. It was amazing. People walked for miles when they heard about the clinic and many came to know Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah and Savior. Take a look. Throughout history, they've been a persecuted people, enslaved, massacred, reviled, and driven from their lands. Indeed, the Jewish people have been scattered to the remotest parts of the earth. Even in a nation like Ethiopia, Jewish people have a history that may date over 3,000 years back to the time of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. The Beta Israel, or the House of Israel, is a Jewish community that has survived in Ethiopia for centuries, despite isolation, hardship, and persecution. Okay, I want to make sure they're separated between children. All the, all the, all the small children are here for pediatrics. Only all the small ones. All the small ones are pediatrics. Volunteer pediatricians from many nations travel to treat children just like these in Gondar. From providing the most basic pediatric care to treating children who are chronically ill and dying. Many are also lined up today, some for the first time ever, to receive free dental care. Volunteer dentists work tirelessly to help as many patients as they can on each trip. But the opportunity to provide such necessary and sometimes life-saving care is second only to the opportunity Jewish Voice has to transform lives spiritually by proclaiming the good news of salvation in Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. A Muslim lady, just by the love that I showed her, wanted to know the God that I served purely by my love, that she was suffering so tremendously. And I held her in my arms and I even cried with her. It was just the right time I said, God, thank you, because you let me know that what I'm doing is exactly what you want me to do. And just like Jonathan Bernard says, it's not what you say, it's what you do. We'd love to have you come with us on one of our outreaches like the one you just saw. It will absolutely change your life. Now, there's a cost involved, but believe me, it'll be worth it. For more information, you can call the number on your screen or go to jewishvoice.tv. A final thought when we come back. Stay with us. 
Here at Jewish Voice, our mandate is to proclaim Jesus, the Messiah, to the world, to the Jew first, and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by ministering to the physical needs of some of the poorest people in the world. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, we are urgently preparing to bring humanitarian aid to a remote Lost Tribes community in Barangwa, Zimbabwe. The Lemba, this faithful yet forgotten people, have ties to the ancient people of Israel, the priestly tribe of Aaron, and have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years. We urgently need the help of friends like you to make this vital life-saving outreach possible. Will you be a blessing to these wonderful people and the thousands of others in desperate need? The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Call or click right now to help us save lives. And with your gift of any amount, we'll say thank you by sending you a book by Pastor Don Finto, which he recently updated and expanded. Your people shall be my people. How Israel, the Jews, and the Christian church will come together in the last days. This powerful resource explains how you can play a critical role in blessing the Jewish people and hastening the fulfillment of prophecy. With it, you'll gain a better understanding of how Israel and Jewish people are at the center of God's end times plans and how God will bless you, a member of the church, when you stand with Israel. Along with the book, you'll also receive the Jewish voice grafted in keychain. On it, you'll see the menorah, the Star of David, and the sign of the fish. It's a beautiful reminder of how Gentile believers have been grafted into Israel's olive tree to share in God's promises and blessings for the Jewish people. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $115 or more today to help some of the neediest people on earth, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned and this beautiful and practical custom woven Afghan throw. This specially crafted Afghan carries the scriptural reminder to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and it will make a comforting and inspirational addition to your home. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this humanitarian aid and to help countless others around the globe, please call or click now. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call or click right now. I want to thank you for watching today, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as I continue talking with the author of Your People Shall Be My People, Pastor Don Finto. As I leave you today, I want to remind you, as I do in every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're told in Psalm 122.6, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom, and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 